everyone. Let's dive right into the deep end. A powerful winter storm puts a rare blizzard warning in effect. Conditions were so bad at Snoqualmie Pass this morning, couldn't even see the road. Look at that right there. And it's dangerous out there for drivers right now as well. Meteorologist Kristen Clark joins mm -hmm. us. So Kristen, let's talk about the blizzard warning. Uh, they're rare around here, but they're also really serious. Break down what we're seeing in the Cascades right now. And when will those conditions ease? That's a big question. Yeah, Steve, I knew our Cascade passes were on the verge of closing. We just got word from WashDOT that right now avalanche control work at 8:30, so it has started is now closing the um, eastbound route of i-90 they've had 19 inches of snow the past 24 hours watched our crews need to clear that out do some avalanche control work westbound routes along i-90 should not be impacted but again i-90 temporary closed eastbound due to avalanche control work. How about Crystal Mountain, the sideways snow, and they've seen a wind gust there at the summit of 83 miles per hour. What you were looking at are full-blown blizzard conditions along the Cascade Crest. We're looking live at Stevens Pass, blowing and drifting snow, really reducing the visibility to near zero at times. This has created those whiteout conditions, dangerously so over the mountain passes. White Pass ski area, I tell you what, our ski areas, they are loving this dumping of snow, but just to get to these ski areas is going to be a tough feat today as blizzard conditions will continue through tonight into early Wednesday morning. How about Mission Ridge? Yeah, they're at the Mission Summit. 112 mile per hour gusts. That is the strongest that at least I've seen along the Cascade Range. And there's Crystal Summit coming in at 83. Alpental Summit at Snoqualmie, a 74 mile per hour wind gust. So blizzard conditions have certainly been observed and will continue to be so through tonight into Wednesday morning as the blizzard warning is still in effect, not only for the Cascade Mountains, but also you notice the Olympic Mountains. It's all from a powerful winter storm that is swirling north of Vancouver Island. And now we're in the wake of this storm essentially that onshore flows ensuring lowland rain, gusty winds, isolated thunderstorms, and ongoing blizzard conditions at the mountain passes. We're in touch upon the coastal flood threat for some of the beaches there along the Pacific coast. And notice what happens by 10 o'clock tonight. Embedded in that onshore flow may be enough energy to maybe kick off some light snow. Centralia into the Portland metro around 10 o'clock tonight. And then we see our mixture of rain and snow uh, in portions of the lowlands tomorrow morning. This is going to be any time between 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. There could be some pockets of wet snow, enough to maybe result in just a slushy coating on the grassy elevated surfaces. Roads primarily wet with this round of rain snow mix in the morning, but notice what happens in the mountains. Hey, the heavy snow and the high winds come to an end by Wednesday night. And I'm expecting past travel conditions, Stephen Tyra, to gradually improve throughout the day tomorrow as a result. Well, we could probably use an improvement. Thank you, Kristen. Not only are we dealing with a blizzard, we've got another big concern, though. The high winds. Earlier, we were talking with Lee Soul about that tree that broke off and landed on the roof of an assisted living home. Can you talk a bit more about the winds in the lowlands today? No, oh, yeah, we've had gusts exceeding 45 miles per hour. Gusty winds. I'm sure you heard the rustling of the trees overnight and the pitter patter of just heavy rain. That's when the actual cold front moved through the I-5 corridor around midnight last night. And we've even had some thunderstorms. Yeah, some lightning captured by the Skunk Bay camera. Thanks to Greg for sending this in. Now, this is from the Hansville area looking north toward Whidbey Island. And sure enough, I did see a lightning strike detected by our Doppler in between Warm Beach and Stanwood. And that might have been the storm right there. So thanks to Skunk Bay weather for that. Looking at some lowland peak wind gusts already. Astoria, one of the highest gusts at the mouth of the Columbia River, 71 miles per hour by Westport. Hello there to the coastal beaches, 63 miles per hour. Even the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, 55 mile per hour gusts. Shelton and Mason County up to 52. The SeaTac Airport, 48. That has caused some airport delays. It's wind and low visibility that oftentimes snarls airline traffic. And that was the case at the SeaTac Airport. And there's Painfield and Everett up to 47 miles per hour so far. Going through some wind advisories and high wind warnings that are currently in effect for the lowlands. First up, I want to touch upon the high wind warning that is in effect for the San Juan Islands, Island County, 
the Quimper Peninsula. Good morning to you. Port Townsend, you are under that high wind warning until 10 o'clock. Wind advisory for Port Angeles, anywhere along I-5 from Everett to Marysville North through Mount Vernon and Bellingham. Winds to a lesser extent there as in Puget Sound, but all it took was 45 mile per hour gusts already this morning to knock some tree limbs down and cause some power outages. And there's a lot of tree debris being noted on our streets and city sidewalks too. So you may encounter that out there for your errands today. For the coastal beaches, there is a high wind warning uh, anywhere from Ocean Shores, Grace Harbor County, Westport, Long Beach Peninsula. Uh, this goes through um, at least four o'clock this afternoon, that high wind warning, wind advisory, Centralia into the Elma area, uh, but also Pacific County, high surf is going to be a concern. We have very large and dangerous waves lapping on shore the coastal beaches, but even coinciding with high tide, which by the way in Seattle is at 148 this afternoon, could result in some slight inundation of some of our low-lying areas. Uh, that goes for the Tacoma area uh, in and around Seattle. High tide flooding likely as well from Port Angeles uh, through Discovery Bay and Island County and those low-lying areas close to the water from Whatcom County through the Skagit Valley and also Snow Homish County. We have that the case for Pacific County, the Long Beach Peninsula. We can see inundation up to at least two feet near and around high tide today. So this coastal flood advisory goes through four o'clock this afternoon. Stephen Tyre, so a lot to cover. My it's goodness. our first big winter storm of the season, and there's so much that often goes on in western Washington in a situation like this. Yeah, no kidding. You talked about snow, we talked about wind, we talked about flooding. We got to uh -huh. talk about how cold it's going to get, too. You were tracking a drop in tre temperatures this week. How low are we going to get? And then this always gets people's ears perked up. What about lowland snow? What's the possibility of that? <laughs> you know, it's been interesting since this time last week, our extended forecast on your favorite Como News app was showing those little snow icons mm -hmm. for late this week. And, and we are still looking at the possibility of seeing snowflakes near sea level, especially with the oh, arrival right. of much colder air later this week. All right. All right then yeah. we'll just have to wait and see. I was also looking at my favorite Como News weather app and saw the snow icons. Yeah, Thank best you. potential is going to be Thursday evening, Thursday night. It's not going to be a widespread whiteout. Um, I think a few select spots can maybe see a minor coating primarily on those grassy elevated surfaces, but any wet roads, I mean, they could turn slick with sub-freezing conditions Thursday, Friday into Saturday. And we're even tracking another weekend storm. High uncertainty with that one in terms of the storm track, but there's still the potential for maybe some flakes uh, in Puget Sound, especially as you go south into the Portland Metro on Saturday. Perfect, thank you, Kristen, for that. Now let's get over to Mo Hyder at Snoqualmie Pass this morning. Mo, walk us through what you're seeing out there. I saw that sideways snow coming down on you <laughs> earlier this morning. <laughs> yeah, well, you can tell by my hat, uh, this, it's just a lot of snow here, and it's gradually getting higher and higher since the last couple of hours. Uh, we're at the summit near Suqu the summit uh, Suquamie, the resort here, just a little down the road from that. We've pulled off a little while ago. Uh, just take a look here. The whole area pretty much blanketed in snow. It's so much snow here, you can't even see any of the road whatsoever. Even if we're going to zoom in a little further down there, it's really hard to see as well. The visibility right now is so low because of all the snow here. And once you notice this, take a look at all these semi trucks here as well. They've all pulled off from I 90 because of how uh, dangerous the road conditions and how treacherous they've been all morning. For anyone going through this area, they can attest to that how dangerous it was. Uh, just like ourselves, when we were trying to get through this area, we had to really have to slow down or take our time this morning. Uh, many of them have been pulled to the side here for several hours now. And also, plows have been going up and down this area as well. Now, as far as the road conditions on I 90, snow is not the only thing they've had to deal with. They have to deal with the rain, also ice conditions as well. All that slush making it very dangerous. And plows, like I mentioned, have been going up and down here for the last couple of hours of snow, just getting higher and higher on the side of the road. This is about half my height here, so you can just uh, just give you some perspective how much snow is in the area. So again, if you are uh, going to have to go through this area at some point today, keep in mind uh, very dangerous conditions, very treacherous. So make sure you take your time, of course, plan ahead. Yeah, and we have to note, Mo, that it's important to, to point out that conditions can change drastically in, in a very short amount of time. You know, Kristen was talking about how uh, the eastbound direction has been closed at some point throughout the, this morning just because of avalanche control work and all that snow that's been dumping over the past couple of hours. Have you ch had a chance to talk with any drivers out there? What are they saying about these rare blizzard-like conditions that we're seeing? 
Yeah, this is something at, to this extreme that many people have not experienced in this area. Like, like a lot of these semi drivers that you see here, people in other vehicles have also decided to pull over and just really wait out the storm. We've seen several SUVs in this area parked right now, uh, just taking care of themselves and just waiting for this thing to die down a little bit. There's also a hotel over there. I counted about a little more than a dozen cars uh, just covered in snow. So that place, people still staying the night there as well, waiting for conditions to change. But like you mentioned, conditions can change rapidly. So a common answer that I've gotten from people around here is that they're really taking that wait and see approach, adjusting on the fly, depending what the conditions are. All they can do right now is just plan and just take their time. Mo, you mentioned how dangerous and treacherous it can be for drivers to travel out that way, but state agencies aren't necessarily telling people to avoid the passes. Any tips uh, from law enforcement or transportation officials? Do they have any uh, for those that do have to drive today? Yeah, really just urging caution uh, for the time being. So you, what you can do ahead of time is change. That is the big uh, key factor right now this morning. When they are required, you have to have them. If you don't have those, you could pay a fine up to $500, so very expensive. So make sure the, air's, the air in your tire is full. Make sure you have a full tank of gas in case you just need to pull over to the side. Make sure you have an emergency kit. That can also come in handy. Also some food as well in case you do have to stay somewhere overnight and there isn't any lodging or hotel options in the area. Also keep some warm clothes and remember use technology really to your advantage when you're in a situation like this. Check the Washout apps, check their social media. I myself, we've been looking through those all morning for minute by the minute updates. That is the best way to plan your day and commute depending on where you need to go. And something to remember, if you don't have to travel through this area, if the roads get too dangerous or too treacherous, simply just pull over to the side because nothing is worth it. Safety has to be a priority at this time. Yeah, safety first indeed. It's good for skiers and snowboarders, but definitely uh, pretty dangerous for drivers out there. Mo, thank you.